In this video, I will go over one of the more frustrating things about stable diffusion, and that is dealing with bad hands. While there is no perfect method to deal with them, I have put together some ways that I use and some popular suggestions that have had different degrees of success. And with that, let's get started. Since hands can be difficult to repair, the first obvious solution is to void them as much as possible, prompting for hands and pockets or using in-paint to hide them all together. You could also have your subjects wearing gloves since it's less noticeable when they don't look perfect. But if you need hands in your image, then there are a few things we can try. There are suggestions that have been around for a long time adding hands or fingers to the negative prompt, and even adding some weight to them. When it comes to SDXL images, after doing several batch runs of the same prompt and seeds, then comparing them with and without negative hand prompts at various weights, I never found a significant improvement to any of my generations. This might just be my experience, so feel free to try it out for yourself. This suggestion mostly comes from users of SD 1.5 models. I will say that using this in Forge on SD 1.5 checkpoints, I did notice better generations more often than not. I wouldn't say they were usable, but having hands in the negative prompt did seem to give me more images with less extra fingers and hands. So really, Using this gave me images that were just easier to fix. I also tested some SDXL hand lures with a few different settings, and again, I couldn't say I saw a big improvement with any of them, but most of my tests were using realistic checkpoints, so it may work better with other models and styles. Really what it comes down to is trying to get the hands that are close enough that repairing them won't be too difficult. So let's try some simple examples first. Looking at this, I would say this is a pretty easy fix. The fingers and hand look good besides the extra finger and the messed up nails. Even the best hands always seem to have messed up nails. So I will mask the extra finger, doesn't need to be perfect. And even with no text prompt this can work. Leave it on default and paint for this. And it really gives us a pretty good result. Once we find one we like we can drag it down, clear the mask. Zoom in and mask the hand, and then switch to improve detail setting. And I will put in detailed female hand. You could also add young or old into the prompt, sometimes that helps. Shouldn't be hard to get a good generation from this hand since it wasn't too far off. And that looks pretty good. Find the best one and drag that one down. We can mask the other hand and do the same. But one thing that might be difficult is when doing the hands separate, they might not match exactly. So you can get both hands pretty good separately and then try to run them at the same time. It can help to get the same shade and tone of the hands and even the nail polish if it has any. So to me, that looks pretty good. And you can go from there to out painting and whatever else you like. Depending on the complexity of the hands, it might be best to deal with the hands after you upscale the image, as upscaling might even deform the hands a little bit, usually in the nails. You could try masking the tips of the fingers, but I have better luck when I just rerun the entire hand. Okay, let's move on to a little more difficult. With this one, we see a large hand and a somewhat thick arm. At first we can try to improve detail and see if we can get lucky enough for it to shrink it down some. And again, I'll add detailed female hand and add small and thin. And even if we don't get a good hand, if it's a bit smaller, we can pull that down and keep going. And I'm also going to tighten up the mask. And some of these are still a little big, but the hand position is pressing down, so that would make your hand spread out a little. So it makes sense. Now if you like the result of the in paint, but it looks a little out of place, maybe too detailed compared to the rest, or the color and shading is a little off, we can go into the debug menu here and turn the in-paint respective field up some. This will decrease the pixel resolution of the area you are in-painting. At the same time, it will see more of the image and be able to blend a little better. The higher the number, the more overall image it sees, but also the less pixels available in the mask. It's a trade-off and you can raise and lower it till you find the right look. It's not a guarantee and sometimes you will get even worse results. But with a little work, you can get it. If you aren't getting the results you like with the improved detail, then you can try regenerating the hand entirely with the default in paint. This will be like starting over, but sometimes it's necessary. Okay, now a little bit more difficult picture with a hand on top of a hand. 
This still isn't terrible, as the overall shape is there and we just need to adjust it. So first, let's try to remove the bottom finger. And I will use the default setting for this. And then pull down the best image. Then I will try to shrink or just completely remove the thumb. Masking the area and I'm just going to put in t-shirt and try to get it to mask out the thumb. Again, it doesn't need to be perfect. We just want a normal overall shape. The thumb doesn't look bad. The only big hurdle is the larger finger here. We could mask it and keep running to get a thinner finger, but the results will be random. So let's just try the whole hand and run an improved detail generation. And if we get an improved hand, we will pull it down and then run it again. And honestly, I can, I can live with these. It's really all about getting a good form and keep improving. If it's a bad form to start with, then it will just get worse. Now say you have a hand that you need a specific complex shape and it just isn't happening. Maybe a simple peace sign or a V sign. If you're having difficulty and it's just not happening, then this is where we start to delve into the scary realm of third party apps. And yes, I'm talking about Photoshop. I know, I know. But you don't need to be an expert or even know how to draw for this. And we can use a free online version that works just like Photoshop called Photop. And we can drag our photo right into Photop. Then what we want is to find a similar hand online. And a simple Google image search can help. So I can Google image search for female hand peace sign. Then find one preferably with white background and no watermarks. And you can either save the image or just drag it right into Photop on top of the other photo. Then on the left side, we want to click and hold the wand tool and pick quick selection. Then click on the hand and you should see it outlined. Click any missing parts. Now we want to go to edit and copy and then edit and paste right into the window and it should make another layer. And we can now right click and delete the first layer with the background. Now we have this floating hand. You'll see that the hand is actually reversed. So with the hand layer selected, let's go to edit, transform, and then flip horizontal. Now we want to resize this and place it. So we either go to edit, transform, and click scale, or use a shortcut which on Windows is Control, Alt, and T. And try to get this as close to the size as you can, and then place it where it looks about right. Then over here we can click the eye to put the mask invisible and then click the background layer now because we want to erase the hand underneath. For this image with a solid color as a background it would be pretty easy but for complex backgrounds you can use the content aware fill. Make sure you are on the background layer and then use the rectangle tool and draw a box around the area. Then go to edit fill and in the fill pull down select content aware fill then ok. If it looks good click the eye icon to unhide your hand layer. And while this looks pretty rough, you can end it here and blend the rest in focus. But let's make it a little better. I'm going to pick the erase tool. And turn the opacity and the flow down at least under 50%. Then I'll click this little down arrow and change my brush size. I mostly want to get rid of the solid edge. The last thing is I want to adjust the brightness since the hand is very bright compared to everything else. So go to image, adjust brightness contrast. And I'm going to turn the brightness down a bit. It's not going to match exactly, but I want the shadow levels closer to the others in the image. Even this might be overkill as focus is going to blend this all in, but helping it along can't hurt. And that's it. Doesn't look great, but it doesn't need to. Go to File, Export As, PNG, and then rename it, and then save. Now back to focus, and load the new image into the inpaint window. Then mask the hand and even the arm a bit so it will blend together. Make sure it's on improved detail. And then run it a few times and hopefully you'll get a decent image. If it's still changing too much, we can turn the denoise down a little. And if it's not blending enough, we can turn up the in-paint respective field a little. Just remember, with this setting, you will start losing resolution on the masked area. If you start losing too much detail, then turn it down. And basically, we keep pulling down a decent image and keep going until it feels like it's blended enough. If it's morphing too much, turn the respective field back down and keep the denoise under 
Also, if you get something you like, but the hand is just too detailed compared to the rest of the image, rather than trying to keep running it, you can drag and drop the image back into Photo P and use the blur tool just a little to fade it out more in line with the image. And while I know once you bring in Photoshop or any image editor, many people won't want to go any further. But for me, it can save more time than just generating images forever and crossing my fingers for a good outcome. Another way, which might seem like overkill, is to generate a pyrocanny image and then edit the hands. This can be done by putting an image into the image prompt, selecting pyrocanny, then going to the debug menu, and on the control tab, select debug processors. Then generate. And you will get a white outline of your image. And you can right click and copy or save the image, or as before, you can drag and drop it into Photo P. And then edit out what you want, separating the fingers and whatnot. You can click the tiny double arrow down here to switch between black and white, then select the brush tool, change the size if you needed, then erase the part you want to redraw. Then switch back to white, and change the brush size to about 2, and try to draw in the hands. They don't need to be perfect, just to be four separate fingers. Remember to use Ctrl Z to undo any errors. Switch back and forth between black and white to make your changes. The other reason for showing this is you can add in designs or even write out text and get very creative results. When done, go to File, Export as PNG, name it whatever, and save. Then back into Focus, load the image into the image prompt, use a high weight and stop at with this, especially if you want the designs to come through. And you can either use Pyrocanny or CPDS with similar results. Make sure to turn off debug preprocessors before generating images again. Describe your new image and see what you get. Preparing hands this way might be a bit much, but it can work, and with the ability to create designs with the Pyrocanny outline, it can open up other possibilities. With this, we can also try other things like starting with only a hand outline, which you can do by editing the Pyrocanny preprocessor image again and just blacking out everything but the hands. Then load that image into the image prompt with the same settings and see what you get. Ironically, I get better results setting it to CPDS when using the Pyrocanny outline with only hands. But using this can get you some interesting and weird results. And actually, starting with just a hand in the position you want and going from there isn't the worst idea. You can really get some dynamic poses that would be near impossible to prompt for. And there really is no skill involved other than a little copy and paste and some erasing. But that's all I have for you guys today. I hope you learned something new and I will see you all in the next one.